to see my screen now. Um, and in the upper right hand corner, there should be a way, uh, a way to maximize the screen so you can make it full screen if you wish to do so. <clears throat> my name is Josh Wise. I'm the VP of Business Development here at RevStream. Uh, and the purpose for this webinar today is to go over the benefits of an online booking engine. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with RevStream, and for those of you that are familiar with RevStream, here's a little recap for you. Um, RevStream, uh, we were established in 2005. Uh, prior to 2005, we operated under a different business name uh, known as Resovation. Um, and we came over here in, in 2005 and expanded our reach into the properties in which we service, uh, working with bed and breakfasts. Uh, working with hotels, motels, vacation rental companies, property management companies. Um, so that's kind of the idea uh, behind RevStream and, and what we've done here. We're located out of Denver, Colorado. This is where we're headquartered out of. And we've got about 21 employees, uh, about 16, 17 of us are in office every single day. And we've got a couple programmers remotely in Michigan and Minnesota. And then we've got another sales rep uh, down in Austin, Texas. Uh, as far as what we do, RevStream, uh, think of RevStream as uh, two, two different portions or two different houses, if you will. We've got the software side of the house, and on the software side, we offer uh, reservation software. We offer the online booking engine, which is why you're here today. We offer a connection to the global distribution system known as the online travel agents uh, and travel websites. And then we also have um, the other side of the house, which is our internet services. So these different uh, sides of the house, if you will, are interwoven together with complementary products. On the internet services side of the house, we offer uh, website design, both custom designs and templated turnkey website design solutions, uh, as well as internet marketing services. So search engine optimization, uh, pay-per-click, uh, social media marketing, mobile marketing, the whole nine yards. Uh, as far as the types of properties in which we work with, um, we work exclusively with independent properties. Uh, so we don't tend to work with any chains or, or, or any franchises. Uh, and I would say that our focus is properties uh, that have 100 rooms or less. I think that's a, that's a good uh, focus size for RevStream. As far as why we do what we do, guys, um, <clears throat> RevStream was established, and the founders of RevStream, um, they grew up in Estes Park, Colorado, and their family owned an independent property. So they got to see the challenges that an independent property goes through. Uh, excuse me, there's a little pop up here. Sorry about that. So they got to see the challenges in which an independent property goes through as it relates to maybe not having the necessary uh, budget or funds available for the technology tools that are needed. Um, and, and seeing you know, the technology that is needed to help uh, run a business. And as a small business, you wear multiple hats. So the idea behind RevStream was is to create a company that focused on smaller independent properties and provided high-end uh, technology tools and services to make your lives easier, generate more money for you, but do it at an affordable price. So that way you guys can be competitive uh, with larger properties or larger branded uh, chain hotels in your area. So that's really the foundation of Restroom and what we do. And, and furthermore, we've extended that uh, even to today and into the future uh, by hiring passion, very, very passionate professionals. Um, obviously, having experience in the hospitality industry is important. However, there are certain things in which, as you all know, that you can't teach people to do. You cannot teach them to be passionate about their job in the industry in which they work in. You can't teach people to be hard workers and, and care about people. So we've really built a great foundation here at RevStream uh, through the personalities of the employees that work here. Uh, and, and that gets me jazzed up to come into work every day. I, I really love that foundation. And then the last thing here, guys, is, is education. We, it's very important to us to share our experiences uh, with you guys and, and everyone else that we come in contact with. And, and I say that because although we have to uh, you know, charge for our services and our products in which we offer, you know, we're not trying to sell to everyone out there in the world. We're focusing on a specific segment of hospitality. 
and we want to share our experiences from everyone that we work with because typically what I find when I talk to properties is they know what they know or they know what they've read about or whom they've spoken with and registering being able to work with hundreds of different properties across the country it really helps us expand our reach with our education. Uh, moving on here, a little bit about me. There's a there's a picture of me there. Uh, don't I hope you're not laughing, and I'm glad you guys are on mute so I don't hear it. But um, a little bit about me. I've been married for five years uh, to my wife Lisa. Uh, we've actually been together for 19 years, so I, I, I think of that as the exception uh, to the rule. Uh, I've got four-year-old daughter. Um, you know, she is uh, she is the joy of my life, and I'll tell you what, she runs that household. That's for certain. Um, I'm a native here of Denver. I was born and raised here. Uh, absolutely a sports enthusiast. Uh, I put a little smiley face next to the Denver Broncos, and I'm still trying to get past that very embarrassing Super Bowl. Uh, I've been here for five years now. I just celebrated my fifth anniversary in October. Uh, absolutely love the company, love the people that we work with uh, internally, and absolutely love the clients in, in which we work with. Uh, my responsibilities here at Restroom Guys, I, um, I oversee the sales department, uh, the marketing initiatives for Restroom, as well as the support team. Uh, I encourage you guys to reach out to me if there's ever anything that I can do to help out, please. Uh, I put a little uh, funny thing in here, maybe not so funny for me. And, excuse me, my wife, uh, she's very passionate about animals, and she loves to help animals, and she told me that we were going to be fostering some dogs because once they get, uh, you know, overrun with too many dogs, they start putting them down. So it started as a, you know, two-week foster, and next thing you know, I've not only adopted a dog, but I've got one for many, many years to come. So, uh, and then lastly, I, I'm a people person. Uh, I'm a fixer of problems. That's kind of how I view myself. I love helping people. So that, that's, that's a little bit about me. All right, jumping into uh, this webinar here, guys. Um, why are you here? Uh, there's a couple uh, different types of reasons why you might be here. Uh, as I understand uh, from the people that have signed up for this webinar, uh, you're here because you want to understand, you know, why online booking engine is going to help your business. Uh, because maybe you don't have one, or you tried one and you didn't really like the features that it had, um, or you're interested in trying it again or, or for the first time, as well as uh, reevaluating your current online booking engine. Uh, is it up to par with other solutions out there? Um, maybe this could be a good comparison for you to kind of understand the feature set that Booking Engine should have in today's marketplace and the benefits that they can provide for you. So uh, as far as what we're going to cover, the agenda here, guys, um, what is an online Booking Engine? What is it? How does it help? Um, how is it going to benefit your property? Um, then we'll start diving into specifics or specific features so that you guys can determine, you know, of these options out there, what's going to appeal to you. And we'll do that through the various different calendar options. Then we're going to look at, from a feature standpoint or a guest expectation standpoint, you know, what are guests expecting to see when they utilize an online booking engine today? Um, and then we'll finalized everything up with some reporting options that you have through a booking engine as well as tracking, uh, as well as some different pricing models. I kind of want to walk you guys through what you're responsible for in terms of setting up a booking engine or maintaining it, as well as you know what tends to be the fees within the industry today. And then at the end there, I'll probably open up the webinar for some Q&As. You know, I'm a big fan of people asking questions so that everyone can hear. Uh, and being able to answer those. So be thinking about questions you guys may want to answer and either type them in the chat box or go ahead and save them for the end and I'll open things up. Okay, what is an online booking engine? Uh, the, the definition uh, of an online booking engine is an application which helps the travel industry support reservations through the internet. And how does that work? How does a booking engine work? Well, that booking engine is installed, installed on your property's website allowing guests the ability to search available room inventory based on specific dates. So I'm assuming all of you are at least familiar with what an online booking engine is, whether you've had it or have not had it. But in general, or in layman's term, it is a solution that allows your potential guests interested in staying at your property to be able to enter in some dates into a search field. And based on that search criteria, it will return results related to your available room inventory. 
Uh, I wanted to put in some stats in here for you guys. Oftentimes when I'm talking to people about online booking engine, it, it's a good reference for me to be able to talk about some industry statistics here. So pay attention to this. I find this to be very important. Uh, 148.3 million travel bookings are made on the internet each and every single year. And what I'm doing with these stats, guys, that you should be taking away from is really determining the importance of the booking engine and, and how you shouldn't be able to live without this type of solution in today's day and age. Uh, internet travel booking revenue has grown by more than 73% over the last five years. So that data over the last five years, as well as expectations well into the future, this is where people need to be. 57% uh, of all travel reservations are made on the internet. This is an important statistic to me, and I really try and make people aware of this. So, so let's think of it on, on a smaller scale, okay? You've got 10 people looking to book travel accommodations. 57% of those people, or 5.7 of those 10 people, prefer to do that online, on the internet, as opposed to the old traditional method of picking up the phone and calling you, or a traditional method of walking into the property. So for those of you out there that do not have a booking engine, that are saying, oh, well, everyone calls me and they book that way, okay, that's fine. However, what about the 57% or 5.7 out of the 10 that don't want to pick up the phone and call you because it's not the way in which they want to make that booking? So that's really resonate. What type of opportunities are being missed for those people that don't utilize an online booking engine? More than 40% of online traffic related to travel queries now comes from mobile devices, okay? Smartphones, tablets. This is what's going on in today's day and age. This is where the future is going. I read a, a statistic uh, released by Google a couple months back saying that they feel that mobile and tablet searches are going to overtake the old traditional desktop searches by the end of 2015. So what that means for you guys as an internal look at your business, if you do not at least have a mobile uh, booking engine solution, you're missing this portion of the market as, as relevant as it is today and where it's going to be in the future. So please be aware of that. 65% uh, of same-day same hotel reservations are made from smartphones. Again, another reason why mobile booking engines are, are an absolute in today's day and age for your business. 39% of online bookings are made outside of normal office hours from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's more reason to support an online booking. If, if Tom Doe wants to make a booking at 6 p.m. at night when he gets home from work because he had a rough day or at 2 a.m. in the morning because he can't sleep and, and his life is getting stressful, by all means, let's make sure that we have the opportunity for uh, Tom Doe to be able to make that purchase decision with your property. Uh, and then this last one here, a typical travel shopper will visit 22 websites and multiple shopping sessions before booking a trip. So these guys are, are educated, okay? They, these consumers, these guests, they're very educated in the sense that they want to do their research, they want to shop around, they want to compare things, and they need that information consolidated in a single system that gives them what it is that they need to see. Buyers may be more interested in pictures. Another buyer may be interested in the price. Another buyer may be interested in the amenities of the particular room. So let's make sure that we're offering a solution that meets the guest needs, no matter what that guest needs is, to capture that purchase decision. Um, how an online booking engine helps your business. So if I haven't uh, driven home the point yet, or those points haven't resonated with you, uh, here's some additional, thing, uh, additional points to be aware of. Providing a convenience for your guests, allowing them the ability to do what they want to do when they want to do it. This resonates back to that 57% prefer, prefer not to pick up the phone and call and speak to you. They want to do it on their own time at their own leisure. Uh, increasing the reservations and the revenue. What are we missing by not offering that online booking engine? Uh, reduces the need for additional employees. I oftentimes refer to an online booking engine as a property's best employee. Now some of you may snicker at that, let me tell you why. An online booking engine is a fraction of the cost of what you would pay an employee annually as well as 
that booking engine never stops working. It's on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It does not take holidays off. It does not get sick. So an online booking engine is the cheapest and hardest working employee you're ever going to have. So for those of you out there not using a booking engine, another reason why you should be. Uh, lastly, improving customer service for your on-site guests. By not having your front desk taking so many reservations called, because 57% of them want to book online, now you're able to interact with your guests on-site more, create that differentiator from the guy down the street by providing high-level customer service, which you all uh, uh, plan to do and focus on at your business. Uh, this screen here, guys, I want to show you uh, what I call a transition from the website into an online booking engine here. Um, so what I did was, is I'm not trying to beat anybody up, but I did find a property out there, and I blacked out their name. I'm not trying to embarrass anyone. But the point that I want to make here is, look at this photo on the left-hand side, OK? This is the website. You see, you see the header. You see the colors. You see the navigation. You see the information. Then on the right-hand side, this is where a guest gets after they click that Reserve Now button. And, and what I want you to pay attention to is notice the difference in size of the footer. Notice how the navigation is different. Although it's still there, notice how it's different. Then down below, what you're seeing on the left-hand side is you're seeing the actual booking engine itself. So what I want you to pay attention to is the guest goes from a website that is themed a certain way, looks a certain way, and then they jump into this booking engine, and now you've got this white, white and gray border. So all throughout this booking engine process, it does not fill up all this, the available room on this left-hand side. And you'll notice this right-hand side column uh, with that different color background, it has nothing in it. So the transition from the website into the vendor's booking engine is not transparent or seamless to the guest. So what we've found in our statistics and review is oftentimes when guests don't get a very nice seamless transition from website into the vendor's booking engine, they tend to bounce out from that situation because maybe they get spooked a little. Uh, maybe they're uh, unsure of what website they're now on, and they're looking for that security lock to make sure that this is a secure connection. So by creating a better transition, uh, you know that's going to help promote that online booking process and ensure that guest is continually moving forward to spending money with your business as opposed to, to getting scared and, and bouncing out. So this next slide, let me show you what a seamless transition to a booking engine looks like. Pay attention to almost the identical nature here between the actual website on the left and the vendor's booking engine on the right. Every, every attention to detail from the logo to the navigation to the upper right-hand corner and the use of the social uh, icons. And then when you get down into the actual booking engine itself on the right-hand picture, on the bottom of that picture, where you see it starts to say reservation, notice how this booking engine has been seen. The reservation, as well as the uh, red or maroon color in that selection, is matching the colors of the logo. And then you see the colors. Uh, the tans and the beiges and, and the yellow tints there, not only showing the rooms, but the, the days of the week and there within that calendar of that two-week availability, it's a clear and seamless transition. Now, to an untrained eye, being the guest, they, have, they, they don't know that I'm now in the vendor's booking engine because this has been such a seamless transition to promote the moving forward of that purchase decision through that process. So for those of you out there that have a booking engine, and for those of you out there evaluating getting a booking engine, I encourage you to speak to your vendors to make sure that they can provide you a custom theme so that way their booking engine solution can match exactly what your website looks like. This is a very important part of that continuation process of that purchase decision. Uh, moving on here, guys, what I'm going to show you over the next several slides is this is what the guests can experience at what I'll call step one of the booking process. This is uh, a, a variation of calendar options. And again, for those of you using a booking engine, those of you evaluating a booking engine, being able to have multiple calendar options for your business to be able to select what's best for you. Okay? So this first calendar option is what we refer to here at Restroom as a quick booking widget. 
So on the right-hand side here, I've given you a couple examples of a quick booking widget. There is a vertical example and there is a horizontal example. Uh, typically, it's more of a preference of a property, which one they go with. I haven't seen any overwhelming statistics to say one converts uh, visitors into bookings at a higher rate. But what is very, very important with these quick booking widgets, guys, is put them on every single page of your website. Now, to the point that I made earlier, guest A may want to see photos. Guest B may want to learn about the history of your property. Guest C may want to see prices. By offering a quick booking widget on every single page of your website, we're making it uh, take as least amount of clicks as possible for that guest to be able to jump in and make a purchase decision when they've collected the information that's relevant to them. So try and get these on every single page of the website. And I put some bullet points in here. This, these things are ideal for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a B&B &B or a hotel, you got three rooms, you got 30 rooms. This is standard in today's industry to promote conversions of online booking. So make sure that you get it on every page. The other thing that I point out here is make sure that these are located above the fold. What does that mean? Every time you land on a page on a website, um, there is information that displays relevant in your face. Okay? Before you have to take any scrolling action to move down that page depending upon how long that page is. So above the fold in layman's terms means it's readily available to the visible eye as soon as someone lands on that page. So in general, think about this. People read top to bottom, left to right. So get those quick booking widgets in relevant uh, places on the website above the fold and on every single page. The last point I have in here. These types of widgets are great not only for repeat guests to jump in exactly where they're going, but they're also important for those immediate decision makers that don't want to navigate 12 pages on your website before making a purchase decision. So by offering them this option, the chances of you converting those visitors into bookings and money for your business is greater. Another example, uh, in addition to the quick booking widget. So this is not this or that, this is in addition to. Okay? So these next couple of slides here would be in addition to the quick booking widget. I've got a two week calendar option here. So what I want you guys to pay attention to is uh, this calendar option of two weeks is only showing two weeks at a time. And you can see there in this screenshot that I've taken that you can move forward with these arrow buttons. You can uh, click on this box to bring up a bigger calendar so that way you can jump ahead several months as opposed to just moving forward two weeks at a time. But you'll see your dates up here. You'll see your units over here. And then this is showing me the individual availability of each particular unit. So you'll notice this bullet point, this is preferred by bed and breakfast. The reason why a two-week calendar is preferred by bed and breakfast is most bed and breakfast have unique units okay, where they can display all of these individual units. Uh, furthermore here, uh, you can click on the unit name in this particular example and it will then take you to bigger photos, more photos, room descriptions, what have you. So this two-week calendar is great for B&Bs and those that have individual units. Now, some points or some tips that you guys should be taking away that I still see people not taking advantage of when I review websites is, let's get the access to the booking engine or availability calendars, whatever you want to refer to them as, in the main navigation. Okay? And let's typically, let's name that tab in the navigation, either reservations or book online or something along those lines. Uh, Restream's been building websites for about nine years now and tracking statistics related to conversions on those websites. We always recommend people order their navigation from left to right based on what makes you money. So let me give you a bad user example. Someone that starts with the word home as the very first position in their navigation is wasting prime real estate. 98% of everyone that ever visits your website is going to land on the home page and the first button in the navigation should not be the word home. It should be the thing that makes you the most money and for small properties the thing that makes you guys the most money is your accommodations, is your lodging, is your rooms. So let's get that information up there and then right after the rooms information is where you should have this reservation tab or this book online tab that then leads to the online booking engine. 
The other places in which you guys should have your calls to action, as I'll call them, your book now buttons or your reserve now buttons, in addition to the navigation, should be on your accommodations overview pages. So typically, in the hospitality industry, you should have an overview of your accommodation section so that everyone can see all of the options in which you offer. If you have individual units, display them as such. If you have room types where you offer many of a single type, like a hotel has 10 king bed rooms, then you would display them in that type fashion, but you still want to have a, but, a button or a button, so either singular or plural, of a call to action for someone to then jump in and make a purchase decision. The other place in which we should be putting our calls to action to get into the booking engine is on the actual individual unit detail pages. So think of a structure of, I'm going to land you on an overview page that shows you all of my options, and then once you decide which of those options you would like to learn more about, you can click in to view more details, and then you're only learning about that particular unit or that particular unit type, and you also have the ability to make an online booking. From a logic standpoint, the less clicks in which we make your potential guest have to make in order to be able to jump into the booking engine to make a purchase decision, the more likely in which that guest is going to be able to make an online booking with you. So do not feel that putting calls to action or the ability to jump into a booking engine is intrusive to the guest. Let them determine when they want to get into it, but let it be as least quick as humanly possible. Another type of option that I would like to show you guys is this two-month calendar. So you'll notice on this particular option, I have two months displaying at a time where I can then adjust my date either by clicking on the interactive calendar here, erasing the numbers and dates over here and retyping them in, or by clicking on this little calendar here, as well as determining how many nights I want to stay, how many rooms. Uh, at this particular juncture, guests are going to enter their dates then your booking engine is going to query uh, typically your reservation software or wherever your inventory is being held to say, okay, based on the dates that are entered of the, the February 20th through the 23rd, I have these units available for the guests to select from. So this particular calendar option uh, is typically preferred in the lodging industry by uh, properties with different room types. So think hotel, motel, where I've got many of one, as well as people that have a lot of inventory. So I've got some bed and breakfasts that I work with that have 38 rooms. Well, that's a little atypical of what you would be used to when you think of a bed and breakfast, right? But 38 rooms doesn't display very well on that two-week calendar option because then guests are having to scroll through this long list of 38 rooms, and it, it slows down the process of them making a purchase decision. So think of it like that. Uh, similar to the previous slide, where you want to put this two, uh, the access to get into this two-month calendar would be on the main navigation, as I mentioned before, as well as on the accommodations overview page, as well as on the individual unit detail pages. So again, those calls to action are how you're going to make money. Let's allow those guests to see those options at every step as they work through the flow of your website and what you want them to see to be able to make a purchase decision. Uh, this last calendar option here, guys, uh, this is what we refer to as an individual unit calendar option. Um, this particular option is preferred by properties that have unique individual units, so your bed and breakfast, your um, vacation rentals where they're all unique. Uh, typically, this isn't something that will work at a hotel or motel that returns by type. Um, and where this particular option goes, this is only going to go on the individual detail page. And the reason why is, is this calendar is tied to the unit. So if you recall, not only should you have the quick booking widget on every page of your website, but then you should either have the two-week or the two-month calendar uh, in the main navigation, on the overview pages, and on the detail pages, or you can supplement on the detail pages with this individual unit calendar, so that way if John Doe wants to go see the unit in which he's determined is the one he wants to move forward with, he can look and see when that thing is available and when that thing is not available and be able to make a purchase decision. Let's assume 
by giving people the access to view an individual unit calendar that they want their favorite unit so badly that they're willing to adjust their date of that stay, which is still going to get you an online booking. So that's, that's the purpose here behind these calendars. Um, this, this next slide here that I'm showing you guys is, is, is what I've titled the flexibility of unit choices. Now I want you to pay attention to this, and for those of you out there that have a booking engine, I want you to go look at your booking engine at typically step two where you've already entered the dates and now you're seeing your options and I want to see if you have the ability for this. And what I want you to pay attention to is this particular, this uh, potential guest, uh, me if you will, for this purpose, I entered, I want to come in Friday the 21st and check out Saturday. Well, you'll notice up here it's showing me the units that are available, okay, and I can select these and move on to make a, a purchase and get to the next step. You'll also notice down here, rooms with no vacancy. Well, some of you are probably saying, why in the world would I want to show someone rooms that aren't vacant based on their search dates? Here's the answer. Again, if someone is very uh, particular to their favorite unit or their favorite room type and they want to get their special view or their special amenities or it's a, a, an annual thing that they like to do, by not only showing them what's available to book right now, I'm showing them what's not available, so that way if they wanted to, they can jump in and see when their favorite unit is available. And what this is doing is, this is continuing the interest and the steps and flow of capturing that online booking by allowing the flexibility to the guest to adjust their dates while still spending money at your property. So again, for those of you that have a booking engine, do yourself a favor and go look at step two and see if you have these options. And if not, I'd reach out to your vendor and let them know that that's something that you're interested in and see if they have it in the works. The other things I want you to pay attention uh, here, guys, is the ability to filter units based on pricing or capacity or, or other uh, search criteria. So you'll notice this particular example that I'm using here. Uh, you can click this drop-down button and you can sort these units based on low to high or high to low. You can also uh, use this little slider, pricing slider. So for those people that have very strict budgets and they want to see only the units that apply within their range, they can do so and everything that does not apply will disappear from that list. Also, sorting on capacity. If you've got a larger group coming in and they want to try and cram three guys in there and you'll let them, great, they can search on capacity. So by offering the flexibility uh, of these choices and filter options here within the booking process, guys, the whole goal is to keep them in that booking buying cycle. Don't make them have to exit at any point in time and then potentially lose that guest or lose that revenue for your property. Moving on to some more features, uh, searchable amenities. Uh, some of you out there that have unique rooms offer different amenities within the room, whether it's fireplaces or uh, kitchenettes or mountain views or jacuzzi tubs or uh, the new flat screen uh, HD TV that you put in that cost you a bunch of money. Uh, booking engines in today's day and age should have the ability for the guest to be able to search on these amenities. Now, for those of you out there that don't need amenity searches, that's fine. These are features that can be toggled off in most booking engines, but, but for those of you that do, and those of you that use those amenities and those differentiators between the units, maybe to upsell and get a potential guest in, in a unit that has a higher ADR, uh, by all means, this is something that your booking engine should have in, in today's day and age. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, once someone has entered their dates, once someone has selected their room, your booking engine in 2014 and beyond should have the ability for you and your property to gain additional revenue. Now, for those of you that don't offer anything else other than the lodging rooms, that's fine. This step can be toggled off and you do not need to. However, for those of you that do offer additional revenue items, let's make sure that they're in the booking engine. You'll notice over here on the left-hand side, I've taken an example of this booking engine that has packages. And you can have a picture of the package, and you can have a description of that package, as well as you can click on a link to read more if you want to have a very long, uh, wordy description to kind of entice the user and, and, and do a little bit more selling through your words. But the ability to add a package is very important in today's day and age. Uh, over here on the right-hand side, you'll notice in addition to the packages, I now have extras or point-of-sale items. 
So for those of you uh, out there that are offering gift shops, or for those of you that have roses or or uh, cheese or whatever it is that you guys offer to uh, gain that additional revenue, make sure that your booking engine is able to support that uh, so that way you're not losing or leaving any money on the table. This is a very important feature in the booking process to offer. Okay, uh, this one, I think this one resonates with everyone. Everyone has different rules at their property, your terms and conditions or your policies. Okay? This is a great way for you to protect yourself against bad guests by stating what your rules are. Okay? So you define what your rules are, and they do not have to be the same as John Doe down the street, as I know most of you don't do. You make sure that you take care of yourself. And what booking engines need to offer in today's day and age is not only the ability for the guest to read these rules, which, let's be honest, how many people, uh, we've all booked online at some point, I'm assuming, how many of us are reading all of the fine print? Uh, probably not many of us, right? But what this box does here is it protects you, okay? So think of this as a, uh, an agreement between you and the person spending money to come and stay at your property. Most booking engines will not let someone complete the booking process unless they have clicked this, saying that they have agreed to their terms and conditions, okay? So things that you want to put in here, your rules, your deposit structure, your cancellation policies. If you require seven days notice or you're going to keep 50% of their uh, deposit, put that in there, okay? So this is where you outline things. Now, I'm assuming some of you out there are thinking to yourself, well, I've used the booking engine before, and they clicked that they agree to my rules, but that didn't matter because they went and made a claim to the credit card company, and that credit card company gave them their refund and money back, money out of my pocket. This has happened to Redstream. This has happened to Redstream customers before. So what we did two years ago, we reached out to Visa, we reached out to MasterCard, and we said, guys, we've got this business, we've got these properties, they use this online booking engine, and, and people are agreeing to the terms and conditions, but you all keep siding with the actual owner of the card or the guest and giving them their money back. How do we uh, eliminate that to some extent? And they explained to us, by offering your terms and conditions in a scrollable box that allows people to scroll up and down with this checkbox, the Visa and MasterCard, American Express, the big credit card companies are more likely to rule in favor of the property than they are in favor of the guest. And, and I tried to understand this and I tried to have it get explained to me. Basically what they said is, is just by putting it out there in, in plain text, and if you have a ton of information, websites aren't as friendly once you're in another vendor's solution for people to be able to roll. But what this allows you to do is it allows people to scroll within this defined box before agreeing to these terms and conditions. And according to the credit card companies, they informed us that they're, uh, they're a lot more likely to rule in favor of the property. So for any of you that have been burned out there, for any of you that think that this might be a great feature for you, uh, this is something that Redstream offers in our booking engine, and I encourage you to go out to your vendor's booking engine and see if they have this, and if they don't, explain to them why it's of relevance. Uh, or find a booking engine that does offer this to better protect you guys in those rare situations that cause you a lot of heartache. Uh, moving on here, uh, billing and payment information. Um, hopefully, and I don't think I've ever really seen a booking engine that doesn't offer this, but uh, you need to collect the contact information of the guest as well as you need to collect payment information. Now, here's advice for you. For those of you out there that have never had a booking engine or for those of you that don't do this, collecting a deposit payment at the time of the online booking puts skin in the game for the guest's perspective. A guest is a lot less likely to cancel, leaving you with a two-night gap on your weekend when you should have been booked up when they have some money or some skin in the game. So I always recommend people take a deposit and it depends on your type of business and, and your cash flow needs, but by having some type of deposit or skin in the game, it's very beneficial for you. But you'll notice on this particular example, not only does the guest see what it is they've selected in terms of dates, they see what it is they've selected in terms of rooms and any added packages or point of sale items in total as well as deposit required, but I want you to pay attention to the contact information and billing information over here. Anything in this particular example that you see bolded is a required field. 
as well as our booking engine here at Redstream, it supports the ability to add custom fields. So I know some properties out there, they want to know who's all coming in the party. They want to know the names of the other uh, guests. I've, I've worked with properties and they want to know what time you're going to be arriving so that way they know if they should close down the front office or early or not. So you can add custom fields to this booking agent set to gather the information that's relevant to you guys. The biggest advice that I would give everyone that I've ever spoken to and I run into this frequently, the less required fields in which it is that you deem necessary for your business, the more likely a guess is to complete that booking process. So just because you can add custom fields doesn't mean you need to add an extra 10 and find out their middle name and their anniversary and their firstborn's age and all that jazz. Just because you have the option, don't make it required. Only gather the information that is pertinent to you and your business. Everything else you can gain at a later, a later point in time, either at check-in or check-out or during their stay. Uh, another point here that's important, guys, is if you're working with a booking engine that does not communicate directly to your reservation software, you're behind the curve. And I don't mean that as uh, it's something that's a necessity and you can't function without it. I mean it as you're wasting time. You're wasting either your time or your staff time by having to manually enter uh, uh, online bookings into your reservation software and manually log into your booking engine and update your availability in your inventory. In today's day and age, there's no reason in the world that you cannot find a vendor that has a quality software and online booking engine that communicate with each other. That's very, very important, and it will save you a lot of administrative time and effort so you can focus your attention on customer service or marketing efforts or doing other things at your property. So very important to have that two-way integration with your reservation software. Um, you know, something Something before I uh, move on to this slide here, guys, just some food for thought that just came into my head. Um, you know, for those of you out there that may only use an online booking engine and not a reservation software, that's also okay. It's based on your needs, what's important to you. An advantage of a reservation software, guys, is that it helps you manage your business day to day. It sees your inventory. It sees who's coming and going. You can record your payments in there. It has financial reportings in there, so you can see previous years, you can see forecasts for current or future years. Um, so for those of you that haven't used a reservation software before because you don't think you need it, my advice would be is find some vendors out there that offer it, like a Redstream, try their trials, see their demos, and see if it can provide any value to you. In today's day and age, having that tool to help you manage and run your business is, is very crucial. It will take a lot of stress off your plate. Uh, jumping into this slide here, connectivity with an online booking engine. What I wanted to talk about here on this slide, guys, is, is in addition to the online booking engine, what are some other advantages of having the booking engine uh, for your particular business? So one I just referenced, a PMS, connecting to a PMS to help you run your business. Another one here is gift certificates. Not everyone does it, or if you do do it, you may not get a lot of them but offering the option for those people interested in to acquire additional revenue is something that we all should be doing in the lodging industry, whether it's you know, the son or daughter wanting to buy for their parents, their parents for their kids, or, or friends or family, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's an additional revenue source, an additional revenue driver. Make sure your current booking engine, or for those of you that don't have a booking engine looking at them, make sure you have the ability through that solution to offer gift certificates. Gift certificates also should be able to communicate directly to that reservation software so that you manage that gift certificate, the gift certificate number, the confirmation, the payments, the expirations, and so on. Uh, GDS, uh, for those of you unfamiliar, GDS stands for Global Distribution System. It's a big, long, confusing word that basically means the ability to communicate your availability and inventory to online travel websites, Expedia, Travelocity, Orbitz, Priceline, as well as online travel agents. So for those of you saying, ooh, no way, way too expensive and commission fee, I want nothing to do with it, that's fine. For those of you that are looking for additional ways to gain online exposure, and only pay when you get money yourself in terms of an online booking engine, a GDS or the global distribution system is a great way to increase your exposure, get traffic and business for 
from people that you otherwise would not have ever received and the ability to remarket to those guests and hopefully they return into repeat guests. So make sure your booking engine is a gateway to connect to those online travel websites and travel agents for those of you interested. Uh, the last point here is TripAdvisor TripConnect. Uh, some of you may know what this means. Other of you uh, may wear 45 different hats at your property and you have no idea what that means. Um, I'm assuming everyone knows what TripAdvisor is. It's a way for you to lift your business on the internet through TripAdvisor's website and for guests to come in and comment and leave reviews for you. So think of it as online reputation management or a fancy way of saying how popular are you. And that website helps sell to future guests. Uh, a lot of people out there want to see, especially when they haven't been somewhere before, they want to see what other people that have been there are saying. So what TripConnect is, is it is a way to get your online booking engine on TripAdvisor's website. They've never done this before, but they get something ridiculous like 260 million different visitors to their website every single month. And for those people that do find your property listing on there, having your booking engine be right there on your business, business listing page for them to book directly with you is great because that doesn't require an extra step for the guest to have to go read a review about you, leave the TripAdvisor site, go find your site directly and jump into the booking engine. Now we're taking steps out of that process, providing more convenience for the guest to promote them to continue on that booking process. So for those of you unfamiliar, I strongly recommend that you look into this. This has been a great avenue for properties and most importantly, you need to be with a booking engine vendor that has built a connection for TripAdvisor TripConnect. There's a lot of people out there that don't have that, uh, you know, a shameless plug. Redstream is one of those companies. We took the time uh, on behalf of our guests or our properties for their guests to build that connection, and Redstream doesn't charge you guys anything for our, our efforts there. So some of the things about look into. Uh, moving on here, uh, I put additional revenue generators, okay? And you'll notice three different things here, and I apologize uh, for uh, kind of combining them in this fashion. Hopefully it's not a pain on your eyes, but I wanted to get this all within the same slide, and I wanted to make it big enough so you guys could see it. But I've got Facebook, I've got a mobile booking engine, and then I have the TripAdvisor TripConnects that I was just referencing. So check with your vendor of the booking engine or find a vendor that has a booking engine that can display on Facebook. Facebook is a great tool, and let me give you an example. Uh, John Doe, or, or maybe Sally Doe is the better example, had recently come with her husband, stayed at your property, she loved it. Sally Doe has 900 friends on Facebook, and she spends six hours a day on Facebook. So what is a better word of mouth or referral source than Sally Doe, who has 900 friends that is on Facebook for six hours a day saying, hey, uh, you know, I just stayed at, at so-and-so property. You guys all ought to go check them out. And when they go look you up on Facebook and get to your listing page and they see that you have a booking engine, again, giving them the convenience to make a purchase decision when and where it's convenient for them. So although I don't, uh, I, I've never seen Facebook represent any uh, humongous significance in terms of revenue, it is a revenue driver, and it is an additional step or an additional source to increase your branding, increase your exposure, uh, and take advantage of this network and collection of people and all of their friends that may have otherwise never thought of staying at your property. This mobile booking engine, uh, if you think back to those statistics earlier on uh, and the percentage of people that are using the mobile booking engine or smartphone to do same-day purchases, uh, or within that purchase cycle, by offering a mobile booking engine on your website, guys, is very, very, very important. For those of you that do not have a mobile website, or for those of you that do not have a responsive website design that adapts to the size of the device that is viewing your website, this is something that you need to jump on because you're already behind the curve, about a year or a year and a half behind the curve. So let me give you an example. What good is a mobile website that is very friendly on a small two-inch screen if they do not also have a mobile booking engine that is big enough for their big fingers and big thumbs to be able to click on? 
It defeats the purpose of the user experience if you have a mobile site when you do not have a mobile booking engine. So let's give the convenience to the guest to be able to utilize a user-friendly solution, whether they're coming to your website, they're coming from a tablet, they're coming from their smartphone. This is ways for you guys to capture that revenue that's sitting there waiting to be captured as opposed to those people getting frustrated and leaving and moving on and booking at your competition down the road. Uh, Trip Connect again, I'm not going to jump back into this because I spent some time on it, but I wanted to show you a picture here. Here is a business listing. So instead of that, that particular guest that's coming here to read all the reviews, instead of them leaving and going to the website, they can simply enter their date and jump right here into your booking engine. So you're not going to have to pay commission fees or anything like that separately for those bookings. Now, for that TripConnect program, uh, TripAdvisor does do some cost per click uh, related to getting people to the booking engine. So if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, uh, you can look in our blog. We've got some information about it. Or go ahead and reach out to TripAdvisor directly and ask them about their TripConnect uh, program. So additional revenue drivers here, guys. Let's make sure we're as visible as we can. Let's make sure we're giving the convenience to our guests to help promote them, make purchase decisions. And most importantly, let's make sure we find the right vendor that has those options for you. Uh, I put here customizing your needs. Okay. So, and the reason why I put this slide in here is for those of you that don't have a booking engine or haven't tried it or tried it but didn't like it in the past, we've come a long way. And what I mean by that is some people have been scared to use the booking engine because they want to control their inventory. Or they have a lot of rules and they feel that they're more comfortable explaining those rules and they're going to close more business as a result. Again, a booking engine is on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. It is your best employee. It can have all the information about your business and it can allow the user to obtain that information at their convenience. Okay. So stop being scared of booking engines if you don't have one. You can control your minimized stays. If you've got a four-night minimum and you won't take anything less, you can set your booking engine up that way, and it will respect the rules that you've put in place. We've got promotional codes in booking engines in today's day and age. If you want to offer a discount, let's say you do an email blast to your repeat customers, everyone that stayed uh, for 4th of July last year, type in this promo code, uh, July 4th, and you're going to get 10% off your stay. So let's use this tool as a promotional offer to acquire more business or repeat guests to get our, excuse me, to get our occupancy up, to get our revenues up. Let's utilize these tools available to us. Uh, the other thing here, guys, multiple rates. I've talked to a lot of people that don't want to use booking engines because they're not able to handle their multiple rates. Maybe you've got a different weekday rate versus your weekend. Maybe you've got a different rate if they stay on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday as opposed to a Friday, Saturday. Maybe you have a different rate if uh, it, it's winter and during the week. It doesn't matter. Okay? You set up your rate typically within your reservation software and you determine which of those rates you want to offer online and then make sure you have a booking engine that can support that and offer those multiple rates that people can, can select from, whether it's military discounts, AAA discounts, what have you. Um, and, and I've taken a screenshot here so you can see some different uh, packages uh, that people are offering uh, within those multiple rates. So don't be scared of booking engines, okay? They're here to help you. They're here to make your life easier. They're here to convert more business so your conversion rates are higher. And they're giving the guests a convenience in this day and age where people's attention spans are zip, zilch, nada, and where people want to use a smartphone or a tablet or their laptop at Starbucks or whatever these guys want to do, you shouldn't care as long as you're collecting that money and giving them the channels or the means necessary to get there. Um, reservation software integration, uh, we talked about this a little bit before. Make sure that your booking engine can communicate with your reservation software. The benefit for that for you guys is the automation of that process. So it's going to take the online booking engine, it's going to download that reservation and all the information into your software, and then the software is going to push back to your online booking engine the availability so that way you're not having to manage more than one system or spend a bunch of extra time in doing that uh, each and every reservation you get. Uh, this one here, this is important. 
uh, I find this to be very important. You guys should as well. Make sure your booking engine not only can report on all the bookings you get online, but more importantly, make sure that your booking engine can communicate with what the majority of the lodging industry is using in terms of tracking on websites, which is Google Analytics. So find a booking engine that can say, uh, hey, Google Analytics, this many people came from this website using this keyword, and they got into the booking engine, and they made it all the way through the process, and I closed this many at, at this much revenue. Or well, another thing that you can use this tracking for is people not making bookings. Where are they bouncing out? Are they bouncing out at step two? What do I need to go look at in step two of my booking engine and adjust? Are they bouncing out once they see the final total or my deposit structure? Maybe I need to adjust taking 75% of the total stay uh, upon the booking. Maybe I should adjust that down to 25% and still have some skin in the game. But this tool or Google Analytics will help you see the results that you're having, the successes, as well as identify the weaknesses so you as a business owner can make some adjustments to assure that we now turn our weaknesses into our strengths to benefit our business. Uh, this screen here, guys, and I, and I know I'm long-winded, and I'm about at an hour and five minutes, so I'll keep going here uh, quickly for those of you that have other things to do today than listen to me ramble on. Uh, booking engine steps. I wanted to give you guys an idea for either those of you looking to switch booking engine providers or those of you that do not have a booking engine, who's responsible for what. Now, every company will differ from step to step, but in general, this is what I find to be pretty consistent. So here's what's needed from you. The rooms, the rates, the taxes, the room description, the pictures, policies, and conditions, what you want to take as it relates to a deposit structure at the time of a booking, as well as getting the booking engine installed on your website. Some booking engine vendors have a website design skill, and for additional fee, they will assist you. A lot of you guys work with your local web guy or whoever you've always worked with that you'll then send that booking engine link to for them to put on your website. But these are typically your responsibilities. Okay? On the other side, here's responsibilities of the vendor. They must create the booking engine or the shell and get your information in there. Uh, hopefully you work with a booking engine that has the ability to have that custom theme for that seamless transition to the guests from your website into the vendor's booking engine to promote the completion of that booking. Uh, the vendor is responsible for giving you the links to the booking engine so your web guy can put them on your website. The vendor also would assist in providing the mobile booking engine so your mobile users, your tablet users out there can have a good user experience while making the booking on those devices. Uh, some type of training uh, and overview and support as it relates to making adjustments to the booking engine, uh, saying you no longer want Unit 4 booked online because you've got an owner coming in or you've got your family coming in, uh, as well as implementing any Google Analytics information into that booking engine. So here's a good look of what you should be prepared for, whether you're switching booking engines or you're getting a new one, as well as what your vendor should typically provide for you. Uh, fees. I want to give you guys a, a good idea of fees for those of you that are paying them and those of you who are thinking about adding this fee. Uh, typically when you get a booking engine, most companies out there are charging a setup fee or they're providing you a package where they're selling you reservation software, a booking engine, and technical support all rolled into one monthly fee. So everyone's a little bit unique, but I encourage you to always ask, you know, what, what am I burdening in terms of fees, both upfront and ongoing? Um, I, I put a note in here, what I'm seeing more and more of today is the monthly fee. And the monthly fee is beneficial for those properties that are open year-round and for those properties that get a lot of online bookings because typically that monthly fee is unlimited, so it's no longer commission-based. However, there are many properties in which I work with or that are out there that I don't talk to, unfortunately, that are seasonal businesses or they offer a lower ADR and they prefer a different payment structure instead of a monthly fee. So there are other options out there and some people are flexible, some people aren't, but I always encourage you to ask. My mom told me it never hurts to ask the question. But there are flat fee per booking. An example would be $5 for every booking that you get. That's appealing for seasonal businesses or those that are, uh, you know, $500 a night and the average nightly stay is five nights. Uh, then there are percentage options out there, 1%, 2%, 5%. 
they range across the board. Uh, those are appealing for people that tend to get lower night reservations or have lower ADR. But nonetheless, I encourage you guys to explore your options with your vendors out there to see what's most convenient for you, and hopefully they're flexible in, in offering those options. Uh, I wanted to put in here what's on the radar. What, what's in the future? What's coming? What's going to be the norm down the road? Uh, not a lot of booking engines offer these things here. Uh, some do. Some offer a couple. Uh, I, I very rarely find anyone that offers all of these things. But these are things that I hear from clients that we work with on a consistent basis. And these are things that Redstream has on the radar for our future here. Uh, inclusive packages. So the ability to tie a package to a room whether it's for an infinite amount of time or for a specific amount of time. An example would be uh, Valentine's Day. Anyone that books my honey room suite with my jacuzzi tub on Valentine's Day also has to take the package that offers the flowers, the chocolates, the uh, couple's massage, so that way I'm gaining that additional revenue. So that's an inclusive package. Uh, repeat guests uh, having the ability to log in. So the idea here that I've heard from many people is loyalty programs. Well, I want my guest to have his own username and password and be able to log in. And, I, and once he books 20 nights, I want to give him the 20 night, 21st night free. Or once he stays with me 10 times, I want to give him his 11th uh, stay with me for free up to two nights. So those are features coming. Uh, the ability to modify and cancel. Some people get scared by this. Let me give you the devil's advocate of that. Offering the guest the ability to modify or cancel their reservation that they've already made online means less work for you. If they want to extend it, if they want to lower uh, the amount of nights, if they want to cancel altogether and be stuck to whatever penalties that you have, that's fine. But you're no longer having to steal those calls and go through the heartburn and spend the 30 minutes on the phone. You know, this is a way for them to have some convenience. Again, a feature that should be toggled on or off depending upon your preferences. Uh, and then the last two, multiple currencies, multiple languages. Uh, there are property that only, properties that only get people within the states. That's great. There are people that get guests from all over the world. So having a booking engine that can not only support uh, the money in which they're used to, as opposed to the conversion to US dollars, but also to be able to put it in that language that's going to promote uh, the convenience of that a foreigner to be able to make an online purchase decision. Uh, this is where a lot of booking engines are going. This is what Redstream has identified and where we're going. So I encourage you to talk with your vendors if these are of any importance to you and find out what's on their roadmap. I don't, uh, for those of you, I, I, I found this picture online on Google. I, I don't know if anyone's seen the movie. I thought it was kind of fun, Back to the Future. Okay, um, so, so that's, that's the presentation, guys. Uh, I appreciate you sitting in. Uh, before you guys hop off here, I am going to open it up for some questions and answers for anyone that has questions. Now, there isn't a way for me to just kind of open it up to one. I have to open it up to all. Uh, so just be patient, and we'll try and uh, do it a little orderly if you guys question, have questions here. But uh, I'm going to unmute everybody. Does anybody have any questions or, or comments or feedback that you'd like to share or ask for the group? Thank you. They were saying they may be introducing. I mean, if that's what you're still caring for. Any questions, guys? Anybody? Yes, absolutely. Nope. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate you guys all attending. Um, I know I'm a little bit long-winded, but I think it's valuable. Hopefully, you gain some information. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to call or email. Even if you're looking at another vendor, uh, I view myself as 